watching Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Today, from the campus of Baylor University in Waco, Texas, the second-ranked Bears hosting the Bears of Central Arkansas. And hi, everybody. Welcome inside the Farrell Center, the Paul J. Meyer Arena in Waco. I'm John, John Morris, Morris alongside former, former Baylor, Baylor standout, standout King, King McClure. McClure. They'll turn the lights back on in a second here, and we'll play basketball. King for the Bears, it's their first game in seven days after a short break for Christmas. In that last game, Baylor's bench outscored Arkansas Pine Bluff 55 to nothing. L.J. Cryer, the freshman from Houston, leading the way. Hey, L.J. Cryer, one of the many talented guards on this Baylor Bear roster. 15 points last game, shooting four for six from the three, 66%. Hey, this kid has a bright future, but what can you expect? He's playing, against, playing with and against every single day elite guards. Hey, expect nothing less from a kid like this. Dreyer is playing well. You could say that about everybody on the Baylor roster. The Bears are 6-0 and uh, playing their first game since that game on the 21st. They'll play today. and They've added a game against Alcorn State tomorrow afternoon in the Farrell Center as well. Central Arkansas comes in 1-6. and six. They have been road warriors. They have played every game on the road this season, including three in SEC territory, playing Baylor today here in the Big 12. There's Jared Butler, the preseason All-American for the Bears. Flo Thamba give you the Baylor starters in a moment, but Baylor set to tip it up. First game post-Christmas. And one of a couple in uh, 2020 portion of their schedule before we turn the calendar to 2021. Starters for the Bears, Flo Thamba in the post. Mark Vidal, Jared Butler, Macy Oteague, Davion Mitchell. It is a deep and talented Baylor team. They lead the all-time series with UCA by a 2-0 count. Davion Mitchell opens with a three, and maybe we shouldn't be surprised. Uh, the two games prior to this one, Baylor has been deadly from three-point range against Central Arkansas. Uh, Davion Mitchell has been hitting from long range, and last year he was, oh, you see another three from Jared Butler. That's how they starting off the game, but Davion Mitchell has definitely improved his three-point shot, and that, that, that's a really good sign. It makes da Baylor even more dangerous. All the starters for the University of Central Arkansas. Here's our officials, Doug Sermons, Jeb Hartness, and Amy Bonner, a female among our three officials at the game today. We'll talk more about that later. So two threes knocked down by the Bears to start this game. Baseline jumper is off the mark. Rebound uh, lost out of bounds and over to Baylor. Anthony Boone is the head coach for Central Arkansas. Here's a look at his resume. He is the interim head coach. He picked up this team last year. Been assistant at places like Murray State, Jackson State, and Grand Canyon. Played at Ole Miss. In fact, had his number 41 retired after his playing career at Ole Miss. The team they played, UCA played at the Pavilion in Oxford earlier this season. Oh. Right by Butler. Terrific move. And then he follows up his miss with a bucket in the paint. The pump fake, though, on the drive was impressive right there, right there by Jared Butler. For an 8-0 Baylor lead, first basket inside the three-point area. For an 8-0 Baylor lead, just about two minutes in, Baylor and Central Arkansas here in the Farrell Center. There's number two in the nation in the polls again this week, one of five Big 12 schools among the top 13 in the nation this week. Long range three, right side is off the mark, no good. Bears run the rebound the other way. Mitchell's begging for the ball far side. Vital wants to get in on the three-point action. Missed on that one. Loose ball saved inbounds by Central Arkansas. I wish Mark Vital would have got a jump shot. <laughs> I think that would have made him so much more dangerous. Just the, his ability to play so hard, but if he could shoot the three, his Baylor team would be almost impossible to stop. He keeps firing. He's not afraid to, pray to shoot on those threes. Here's a three by the Central Arkansas Bears that has knocked down first points of the day. That goes the way of Jason Baker. Uh, I'm sorry, Jackson Baker, first two three-pointer of the day for Central Arkansas. That's a good sign right there. He's normally a spot-up shooter, but no, he hasn't really shot it well from the 336. is decent, but he hasn't really shot it well. But that's a good sign for Central Arkansas. Jackson Baker, a sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. Brophy prep. 
And the Bears turn it over. Ball goes over to the Bears. It's Bears and Bears today here. But we'll try to be a little more specific. Green and gold Baylor compared to the uh, purple and gray Central Arkansas Bears. Is this is the school that has uh, their football field. The, uh, fi the stripes or the alternating five yards are either purple or gray. Do I? Have you seen that? Yes. I haven't seen it. You need to see a picture <laughs> of that. It is very unique to uh, Central Arkansas. Is it kind of like almost uh, some bit of Boise State feel? Uh, yes, but a little more, uh, a little, a little more robust, I would say. <laughs> oh. Here's a drive, but a block. Mark Vidal got the clean block coming in from behind. Ball goes out of bounds. Boy, how about that reaction and recovery by Mark Vidal? Man, that's what Mark Vidal does. I've seen it way too many times in my uh, four years here, but that's what he does. He got beat, but was able to recover. Three-pointer left side. This one is good by DeAndre Jones. Jones, the senior, knocks it down. And it's a two-point game. 8-6 is now the Baylor lead. Davion Mitchell firing again from three points. And he's got it. His second made three here in the early going. Mitchell with the rebound, the run out pass, stolen away. Turnover Bears on the fast break opportunity. Baylor's looking a little rusty right now. Defensive transition has been two times where they lost their man, didn't know who they were guarding. Then you give up the three on the underneath out of bounds to a wide open shot. They look a little bit rusty from the break. Adam Flagler off the bench, set to come in, next dead ball. The three that is short, rebound Macy Oteague for the Bears. Brings it up the center of the floor. Pull up three, that one's no good, front iron. Rebound by Jared Chatham. It was a seven day break between, between games for the Bears. Coach Drew and the staff really wanted to give this team some time off oh. to go home for Christmas. And there's DeAndre Jones, not shy about hitting from three-point range. My man is getting shots up today. DeAndre Jones with another three. That's what he does. He's shooting 48% from the three on the year. So he's playing really well as a senior, and he's the leader of this team. He's two of three from three-point range. Butler firing. Triple is off the mark. Loose ball tipped out to Mitchell. Butler, runner, good by Jared Butler. Come Central Arkansas in a hurry. Baylor hustles to get back. So the Bears had some time to go home for Christmas. Uh, coaches really wanted to make that happen. Came back on Saturday, the 26th, tested, practiced on Sunday and Monday, and playing today on Tuesday. And that ball knocked out of bounds, but last touched by uh, Jackson Baker. So turnover Central Arkansas. It's the Bears ball when we come back. The Baylor Bears ball leading 13 to nine. Just getting going in the Farrell Center, Baylor in Central Arkansas. So what should we do? That is our score. Baylor's associate head coach uh, Jerome Tang, final words of uh, uh, encouragement, <laughs> of uh, <laughs> blessing, of prayer over the guys, and instruction as they go back on the floor. How about this, Baylor, only, one of only four teams in the nation that have been ranked number one three of the last five seasons. They're number two right now in the poll behind only Gonzaga. Looks like that game's not going to happen. Baylor-Gonzaga canceled on December 5th, postponed initially, and now looks like there's not going to be a spot for that to happen. Jonathan Chumwa Chachua off the bench, and he takes the nice feed from Davion Mitchell for the two points. Nice play coming out of the timeout. Third of all baskets uh, prior to that one were three pointers by the two teams combined. That one obviously a two pointer. Chachua off the bench. There's another three and a bank in. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he didn't call for that, but Baylor has to know that he's looking to get it up right now. How about that one? Banked it in. Matt Meyer off the Baylor bench firing from three point range. Shot no good. Adam Flagler is out there. Flagler, the sophomore from Duluth, Georgia. Transfer from Presbyterian has uh, has missed the last two Baylor games. So uh, Adam Flagler, he's got to be chomping at the bit to be back on the floor. Yeah, Adam Flagler was actually the Bears' leading scorer uh, before the last game. This kid can play. He's very talented coming off the bench. Oh, J.D. Wow. the ball. <laughs> Uh, talk about the waters parting. They certainly did there for Jared Butler. Easy lay-in. 
Bears lead by five. Six and a half minutes in, first half. Baylor and Central Arkansas. Three right side, uh, well guarded. The three is off the mark. Chachua with the rebound. Davion Mitchell blows by his defender. Is it back outside? Matt Meyer, the big step. Shot no good, but Jonathan Chumwa Chachua with the putback. Dara plays so hard every single possession. And, you know, in this time of age, it's kind of sad that we say that playing with a motor is, is considered a skill when everybody should play hard and everybody should play with a motor. But he has a super high motor, and that, that, that distinguishes himself from a lot of players. This is DeAndre Jones dribbling on the perimeter. Oh, step back, step three, back. and left it short, taken out of the air by Jared Butler. Butler up the floor, trying to hit uh, Chachua with the pass. Knocked away, saved in bounds, but two Jones for Central Arkansas. Kind of like freshman uh, JB right there, trying to do a little too much on the break. Jumper left side by SK Shitu is no good. Shitu, the junior from uh, Rogers, Arkansas, Providence Academy. Jared Butler, top of the key. Looking for the screen from Chachua. Right. Left corner, Meyer drives in, shot no, but a foul. Matthew Meyer will be going to the free throw line for the Bears following a timeout. Bears by seven early. College softball world is mourning the loss of Mark Lumley, longtime associate head coach for Baylor softball. Came here with Glenn Moore 18 years ago. What a tandem, what a trio, Glenn Moore. Mark Lumley and Brittany Sneed Newman have been. Lum passed away after a valiant battle with cancer two days ago. That's a live look at Getterman Stadium where the uh, picture of Lum and uh, in his memory uh, stands. There will be a memorial service, a celebration of life tomorrow morning at 11 here in Waco for Mark Lumley. We certainly send our condol condolences and share with his wife Stacy and their sons in the loss of Mark Lumley. I am telling you, there's nobody like Lum. He could crack a joke. He had a smile all the time. Great, uh, great fit for Baylor University and great fit for Baylor softball. So we are mourning his passing. Matt Meyer free throws out of the timeout. Bears lead by eight over Central Arkansas. King, uh, so far, Central Arkansas uh, without one of their top players on the floor. Yeah, Ryland Burgesson is, don't really, don't really know what's going on right now, but he's a huge loss for the Bears, averaging 15 and four, and four rebounds. So, oh, that, like that might have been all ball. But yeah, that's a huge loss for Central Arkansas right now because he's, if not their best player, one of the best players on this team. So we'll see if we can get some information on uh, Bergerson, where he might be. Hmm. That looked like it was all ball. Okay. He caught it in the air. Yeah, maybe got him with the body a little bit. I guess that's what they called. Samson George goes to the free throw line for Central Arkansas. The foul on Baylor's Matt Meyer. Shot is up and no good. Rebound Jonathan Chamwa Chachua, but knocked out of his hands. And Central Arkansas will keep it there half of the floor. Rebounding favoring Baylor, 12 to five. Lead to the Baylor Bears, 20 to 13. Got to look down low. Shot clock at 10 for Central Arkansas. Spin, head fake, shot, and it rolls in from the left elbow. That good there. That was a good 28 seconds of defense. They actually didn't even let the ball get into the paint. Eddie Kyalude with the bucket. Kyalude, the bucket for Central Arkansas. Scramble for it on the floor. That is LJ Cryer who just came in, comes up with the loose ball. Matt Meyer will drive and a foul. Meyer will go to the free throw line again for Baylor. That was going to be on Samson George. Puts Matt Meyer back at the free throw line. 
where he's one of two on the day, make it two of three. I've really been impressed with Matt Myers' development. I think we talked about the last game. Just it seems like the light bulb has came on for this young man. And from my freshman year being here to now, he's almost like two different players. There's certain plays he would have made when I was here that he won't make now. Like the same mistakes, the shot selection. Like the light has come on for him, and he's definitely maturing and becoming a way better basketball player. Even though he's always been talented, but now he's starting to take it to the next level. A couple of free throws there by Meyer. He goes to the bench as Mark Vidal comes back on for Baylor. Ooh. Baylor Bears with a seven-point lead. That was a drive by DeAndre Jones. He got to the rim, but then just missed the layup. Mark Vidal comes back. In traffic, hits the runner for Baylor. Lead is nine, biggest of the half for the Baylor Bears. Ball nearly stripped away. Vidal is everywhere right now. <laughs> he is all over that ball. Went for that uh, strip, didn't get it. And the three-pointer was just off the mark. By Masai Oluwakari. Here's Mark Vidal again. How about this drive by Vidal? Doing what Mark Vidal does. Super strong, super physical. Able to play through contact. Maybe a little contact. It should have been an and one, but play through it. Doesn't want the foul. Quick timeout here. We'll keep it here. Baylor Bears have their lead up to nine equals their largest lead of the half. Told you Baylor's added a game to the schedule. They'll play tomorrow, uh, 2 p.m. Central Time here in the Farrell Center against Alcorn State. Game added to the schedule. Central Arkansas, King McClure has come out uh, hot and not shy about shooting three-pointers today. Not shy at all. If you want to play against this Baylor team, this good defense, you got to be able to knock down shots. And so far, Central Arkansas led by DeAndre Jones, has done that. They've done nothing less than that. Knock in shots, even banked one in earlier. But you have to be able to make threes, especially against this good Baylor defense, because you don't get too many opportunities. Central Arkansas, four of eight, 50% from three-point range so far in this first half. Baylor has the lead. Last time uh, these two teams met was the season opener last year. Baylor won at 105 to 61. That was a game in which Baylor hit 18 of 33 three-pointers. Uh. Broke the Farrell Center record for three-pointers made. 18 made threes last year. A little diamond pressure right now. We don't see too much from the Bears. Interesting call by Coach Drew. Breaking the pressure, and is that a charge or a block? It is a blocking foul called on Mark Vidal. He's not buying it. Coach Drew isn't buying it. Brendan Simmons with that drive for Central Arkansas. Crowd's limited to 25% here in the Farrell Center. Gives us uh, really a bird's eye uh, listen in to the coaches and their instructions a lot of times. You can hear them very clearly. Oh. Nice drive. The alley-oop attempt just off. With the rebound by the Baylor Bears. Casey OT knocks it in, short range jumper on the left side. 13 point Baylor lead, the largest of the first half. Here's Butler in double figures, scoring already here in the first half. He's got 11. Scott Drew on the Baylor sideline, his 18th year here at Baylor, his 19th as a Division I head coach. One year at Valparaiso as head coach, succeeding his dad. He is Baylor's all-time winningest coach. Baylor has re reached tremendous heights under Coach Drew. Uh. Staff, how about the alley-oop to Jonathan Chumwa Chechua with the flush. We call him last game Air John. I think that might stick. I like that. Air John going up for the lob again. Beautiful play, beautiful finish. The Bears lead by 15. The Baylor Bears lead by 15. 
I feel like Coach Drew is one of those coaches that's just never going to leave the program. I think he's going to just, like, retire here. And we hope. Just, just, just die here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we hope he is here a long, long time. Three-pointer by Teague misses. Central Arkansas with the ball. 10-0 run by the Bears over the last 2:06 here in the first half to build the lead to 15, the largest of the game. Jones, a little wraparound pass. Three left corner is good. A three-pointer from the left-hand corner by Masai Olawakari. And that was a really impressive play by DeAndre Jones. Able to keep the defender on his back, get the nice little wraparound pass that led to an open three. 30 to 18 is the Baylor advantage. Vidal tries to drive on the baseline, a blocking foul. That'll get us to a timeout. How about the assist and the finish by Jonathan Chumwa Chachua? Bears lead by 12 over the visiting Bears. How about the 1998 NCAA tournament, the game in Oklahoma City, Valparaiso and Ole Miss. That was the game in which uh, Coach Homer Drew called out Pacer. Pacer was the call, right? You know that call. <laughs> and it worked to perfection. Bryce Drew hitting the game winner to knock off Ole Miss in the NCAA tournament. It's one of the plays that gets replayed every year come uh, March Madness. Uh, the other side of that was the Ole Miss team, and Anthony Boone was a part of that Ole Miss team, and uh, he, he remembered it. Uh, he remembers it very well. I don't think he'll ever forget that. One of those shots that always, always remembered as one of the greatest shots of NCAA tournament history. Maceo T knocks down the triple for the Bears, who come out of the timeout, still firing from three-point range, a 33-18 lead for the Bears. Lothamba is back on the floor in the post position. Here is a turnover by Central Arkansas, DeAndre Jones. Bears have the ball back, leading by 15, first half. Told you Alcorn State tomorrow here in the Farrell Center, then back in Big 12 play at Iowa State on Saturday. Jones just took it away from Davion Mitchell. Layup no good, rebound Fombo for the Bears. Got to turn the tables on Davion Mitchell there. Yeah, you don't see that happen too many times. Davion Mitchell getting his, his pocket picked. Yeah. Nice entry pass. Thamba holds his ground. Kick it back outside. In the paint, Macy O.T. giving some help to Thamba in the post and slaps it away. Pass up the floor, and the Bears give it right back to Central Arkansas. That was the amazing thing about uh, Baylor's last game, the win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. One, you know, by a large margin, but only had five turnovers in the game. They did a great job taking care of the ball. Yeah, right now, uh, we mentioned this earlier, they're just a little bit rusty. You could tell. I mean, right now, last game, five turnovers, super sharp. This game already, seven turnovers. So they look a little rusty. And you can tell them defensive end. You see the backdoor cut by Jackson Baker. But they're just allowing, they're, they're allowing too many easies to happen. Too many careless turnovers, allowing Central Arkansas to get easy points, easy buckets that they normally don't give up. Three left-hand corner is good by Baylor. Fortunately, they make shots. <laughs> <laughs> that <Yeah>. always helps. <laughs> Jared Butler with the three from the corner. Assist by Davion Mitchell. Taylor up 36 to 22. And a quick timeout by Coach Drew and his staff. Look at that staff. We mentioned Coach Tang, Alvin Brooks, John Jacobs, Bill Peterson, Ditya Malhatra, Jared Nunes in there. One of our officials today, this is, uh, this is Amy Bonner. She's working with Doug Sermons and Jeb Hartness. Uh, it is rare to see a women's official in NCAA Division I men's basketball. And best we can tell, Amy is just the second woman to work NCAA Division I men's games. Crystal Hogan last year was the first blazing the trail. And here's Amy Bonner working this game today. We uh, feel very safe in saying the first female to ever work a Baylor men's game. How about that? Groundbreaking. Right. Shout out to Amy. We need more women in the, in the sport. That's really 
Like even when you look at the, the Kamala Harris, the vice president, we need more women in the world doing things like this, doing things that you're not used to women doing. Shout out to Amy. So the Bears have the ball back. Adam Flagler just back on the floor, and he is not wasting any time, knocking down the triple from the top of the key. Baylor called that last time out specifically to address the defense, and that was what Coach Tang was talking. I guarantee you I know exactly what he said, because I've seen that, <laughs> that, that little spiel too many times. <laughs> That's funny. You know exactly what he said. Yeah, I, I could probably... <laughs> I could probably <laughs> recite it off memory right now, but for sure. As you see, this three, Adam Flagler missed the last few games. Hey, doesn't look like it. Coming off the ball screen, shot is wet as water. Good looking shot by Flagler, as King said. Still Baylor's uh, leading scorer on the season. And firing another three. Adam Flagler, wow, he's making up for lost time. Couple of threes back to back by Flagler and the Bears lead by 20. Pass sails, untouched out of bounds or maybe touched by DeAndre Jones. Turnover, Central Arkansas, Baylor Bears have the ball back. Five minute mark, first half. Baylor leads Central Arkansas by 20, 42. 22 is our score. Baylor leading the nation in three-point uh, percentage. There's L.J. Cryer helping that stat along, knocking down the triple from the corner. The Bears are red hot from three-point range today. Right now, 8 of 14, 57% from beyond the arc for Baylor. Hey, they're lucky they're making shots because if they were not making shots, this game would be way closer, and Coach Tang and Coach Drew would not be happy campers. So Central Arkansas to inbound on their baseline. Their half of the floor. And ball knocked away and stolen by Baylor. Turnover, Central Arkansas. Three, this one no good by Cryer. Cryer, who had 15 to lead Baylor off the bench that went over Arkansas Pine Bluff, their last game prior to today. How about this combination? The guards out there are Cryer, and Flagler, and Davion Mitchell. You got so many combinations yeah. with those guys, you know, that you can play out there. I mean, when you have five, six guards who are all elite, talented, elite level guards, you know, you can mix up the lineups. You can even throw Matt Meyer into the guard rotation. Baylor Bears lead by 21 over Central Arkansas. Timeout on the floor in the Farrell Center. Along with the staff of Anthony Boone of Central Arkansas, part of the Black Assistant Coaches Alliance, 40 men's and women's Big 12 basketball assist, uh, assistant coaches. Their goal is to connect with coaches from other sports and become a resource for all coaches and student athletes. The Community Voices and the Black Assistant Coaches Alliance. Back to play in the Farrell Center. Both teams firing and hitting threes today with regularity. These plays like that, John, is what I was referencing earlier. They lost their man in transition, didn't know who to pick up. And it was a wide open three right there. Something they have to clean up as they move forward. Kyalude hit that one for Central Arkansas. Both teams at 50% uh, or better from three point range. Baylor's at right at 50%. And now just a tick under 50%. Right and Central Wait, Arkansas now. at 55. That's three partially blocked, I think, Matt Meyer. They've got a hand on that one. Starts the break the other way. And Flagler the charge. So a charging call on Baylor's Adam Flagler. That was a good call. DeAndre Jones beat him to the spot. Took it in his chest. Right call. Good call by Amy right there. So Central Arkansas with the ball. Under three minutes to play, first half. 
Andre Jones getting it done on both ends of the floor. Nine points, five rebounds, and drew the charge there on the defensive end. Nice head fake, shot up and in. Great fake. Led to the bucket for Kyalude. Kyalude has had a solid night tonight. He's playing really well. Him and DeAndre Jones are stepping up and, and leading this Central Arkansas team. This is a 7-0 run now by Central Arkansas. But within 16 and 45-29. Meyer knocks down the three. Matthew Meyer, the junior out of Austin. Westlake joins the three parade for the Bears. Pass. And an answer of three of his own. Another one for DeAndre Jones. I promise you after this game, tomorrow when they watch the film, Coach Tang is not going to be happy. Coach Tang is going to be hot. Is it good that they have another game tomorrow so they don't have to spend a lot of time on this day? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a great feeling because you don't have to spend that much time because you're looking, looking ahead to the, to the next game tomorrow. So that, that's the only good thing about this, but Coach Tang is going to be hot, and he's definitely going to stress defense. Another three attempt by Jones. This one rims out. Rebound Bears. Jonathan Chumwa Chachua had the bucket the last time. Bears lead at 50 to 32. Into the paint, the drive shot no good. Central Arkansas the other way. Jones the head fake. Meyer goes flying by. Uh. Jones knocks it down. Andre Jones is having himself a night right now with Bridgerson out, stepping up to the plate. Andre Jones has 15 points in the first half. He's five of eight from three-point range. So all of his buckets from, uh, from beyond the arc. DeAndre Jones, a senior from Boise, Idaho. <laughs> but the Bears can uh, do the same. And there's Jared <laughs> Butler hitting another triple. 18 made threes between the two teams here in the first half. 18. Hey, Baylor, Baylor makes shots. Central Arkansas does too, but Baylor makes shots, and their shot-making ability kind of allows them to be a little sloppy on the defensive end. Nearly getting the steal there. Finally, they get it as Chachua dives on the floor to cover that ball. And I think called a timeout to avoid the tie-up. It's a regular occurrence, Jonathan Chumwa Chachua diving on the floor. Timeout Baylor will keep it right here. Bears of Baylor lead 53 to 35. Made reference to uh, Bergerson. We are told that he is homesick, not COVID related, but uh, for Ryland Berger Bergerson, uh, the senior from Boise, Idaho, not to be available for Central Arkansas today. That's a big, uh, big hole to fill. Yeah, that, that's a big hole, but his teammates have his back right now. DeAndre Jones, 15 points. Eddie Kyalude stepping up, nine points right now. His teammates are, are, are filling in the void. There's the 53 points. Final 22 seconds before halftime. Shot clock is off. Bears can uh, play for the final shot of the half right here. Jared Butler dribbles just inside the midcourt stripe. Six seconds, now five, and here they go. Jared Butler, cross court, and they didn't get the shot away. So a little bit late there getting the shot away, but King, Bears lead big at halftime, 53-35. Baylor men number two in the nation, the Baylor Lady Bears number seven in the nation. They're back at practice this week, and they'll be back in action this Saturday on the road in Fort Worth against TCU back in Big 12 play. And a big uh, non-conference game coming up on January 7th here in the Farrell Center. Fourth-ranked UConn and seventh-ranked Baylor. Paige Bukers, you see, for UConn and Alyssa Smith for Baylor, and you see their numbers those are just two of the talented players that will be on the floor that night. Well, this is a matchup I would definitely be tuned into. This would be a great game. Hey, Gino Ariami versus Kim Mulkey. Legends in the making. Two Hall of Famers and two elite players. Well, just not two elite players. A court full of elite players. If you do not watch women's basketball, that is something you must watch. We need more appreciation for the women's game, everybody. Well said, and uh, that's a big one. Only thing, is, uh, the shame is it won't be a packed 
house here in the barrels. Yeah. You know, 25% <laughs> capacity, which will be strange for a, a top-notch matchup like that one. You see the uh, national championship and final four banners for the Lady Bears that hang in the rafters here in the Farrell Center. They'll be limited to 25% for that game as well. Mm. But uh, it'll be nationally televised on ESPN 730 Central Time, January 7th. So uh, set a reminder for that one, the Lady Bears and UConn on January 7th. Is this 25% just a Baylor rule or is that nationwide? Because I watched Texas Tech game last week, <laughs> and I swear they had a full house. I mean, I guess people in Lubbock just don't care, but uh, yeah. they, they had a full packed house. Students were all the way filled to the top against Kansas. You know, number one, it was Kansas. Number two, <laughs> I think the 25% is, is uh, a state of Texas uh, uh, regulation, but absolutely. maybe Lubbock, maybe it doesn't apply in Lubbock. I don't know. They, they broke the code for <laughs> real. <laughs> you know, but I may, you know, I, I don't know that for a fact. Maybe it's different even in different parts of the state of Texas. But uh, I know here it's 25% capacity max. And they already do things different in Lubbock. They're a little different out there. That's my cousin. She works out there, lives in oh. Lubbock now. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of, Central Arkansas from Conway, Arkansas, you got a lot of relatives over there. Yeah, my whole family on my dad's side is from Conway. My dad's actually out there right now. Uh, but, yeah, my whole family is out there. My brother even went to Central Arkansas and, and played ball there many, many moons ago. But, yeah, shout out Central Arkansas. Conway, Arkansas, Mayflower, that area. You know that area pretty well. You probably made a lot of trips there, haven't you? Almost two, three times a year. <laughs> <laughs> nice break by Baylor after a couple of missed threes. Macy Oteague finishes in the end of that fast break. Two for the Bears of Baylor to go back up by 20. One minute in, second half, 55-35. Baylor on top of Central Arkansas. Drive into the paint. Flo Thumba, the defense of Jared Chatham there in the paint. Baylor comes away with the ball, and Thumba gets the feed and ends up with the bucket at the other end. Thumba may have been poked in the eye inadvertently. But he got the bucket that puts Baylor back up by 22. I think he's good. He'll be okay. Another look at it. Good screen, good roll, good find by Davion Mitchell. Gives him another assist. Flo turned around, got, like, got poked in the eye. So uh, Davion Mitchell, the assist, that is nine on the day for him. He's got six points and six rebounds and nine assists. Daniel, our statistician up here, has uh, Davion Mitchell on uh, triple-double watch. Season high in assists with nine already for Davion Mitchell. Think he'll get it? I say yes. What do you say? <clears throat> I, I don't know. I hope he gets it. Right. I hope he gets it, but I don't know. It just depend, really depends on Coach Drew and if he's going to play the, 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 the bench or not and let, let Davion rest for tomorrow. So we'll see. I hope he gets it, though. Somebody whispering Coach Drew's out here. <laughs> hey, he needs two points for a triple-double. Hey, leave him out there. <laughs> oh. Score pass to Matt Meyer, and there's another triple for the Bears. They continue their blazing shooting from three-point range. Oh, that, that, you can't hit a three, come back down, and then play defense <laughs> like that, Matt. Uh, that's unacceptable. Just let the guy blow by you. And you see, they put an emphasis at halftime. Because of that blow by, you can hit a three, but if you don't play defense, you're going to get subbed out. And that's what's happening right now. Mark Bynum about to come into the game for Matt Meyer. It's just lazy. Eddie Kailud at the free throw line as Mark Vidal comes on for the Bears. Kailud looking for his 10th point of the day. Andre Jones, the leading scorer for Central Arkansas. He's got 15. That's the number he had at halftime. Missed both free throws there. Remains 60 to 35, Baylor. Davion Mitchell lost the handle. Just that ball just eluded his grasp and went out of bounds. SK Shitu is back on the floor for Central Arkansas. 
Jitu a junior, but there are some veterans on this uh, Central Arkansas roster that Coach Boone really thinks have helped them, you know, navigate these uh, COVID schedules, cancellations, postponements, road games, all of that. Having a veteran squad is really a benefit. Yeah, I mean, we see it with, especially look at the Blue Bloods right now, with Kentucky and, and Duke. They, they, they're struggling right now. They don't have any veterans. They don't have any upperclassmen. I think right now we see in college basketball is that you see a nice layup by Macy Oteague. In college basketball, upperclassmen is the way to win. You're not going to win with younger guys, especially in COVID times, and not mentally ready to handle that. Yeah, that's a really good point, and that's one of the things both these teams have to their benefit. Some veteran guys, guys who played a lot of minutes, played together a lot, and real a real benefit for both Baylor and Central Arkansas. Here's Mark Vinyl firing a three. It's no good. Rebound by Eddie Kyloud. Good no. pass. Drives and kicks it back outside. Kyloud's going to try again. It rims out. No good. That's beautiful basketball. That's one of those shots that as a basketball player, when you have a, a beautiful play in the extra swing pass and you miss the shot, you kill yourself. Like Those are the ones you've got to make. Andre Jones, the runner, the tip, no good. Flo Thamba grabs the rebound. Outlet to Mitchell to Jared Butler. I would like to see Flo try to match the energy of, of, of John. I mean, it, it's like a huge difference when John gets on the court than when Flo's playing out there. If Flo could match the energy that John brings, which is hard to do, I think it will take Baylor to the next level. Speaking of, here's Jonathan Chumwachachua back on the floor along with L.J. Cryer and Adam Flagler. Here, John. <laughs> Here, John. Every day, John. Man with many nicknames and getting more every day. <laughs> Mitchell, a three. It is, ooh, off the mark. Central Arkansas takes it the other way. 62 to 35 is the Baylor lead. Four minutes into the second half. Foul on the perimeter. Called by Amy Bonner, one of our three officials today. Mentioned, uh, we think the first woman to ever uh, officiate a Baylor men's basketball game, only the second woman to officiate NCAA Division I men's basketball. And you put her with Doug Sermons and Jeb Hartness, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, good crew right there. And Doug, I remember Doug has done a lot of our games and made a lot of great calls and unfortunately a few uh, ones that didn't go our way. <laughs> Contact and a charge is drawn by Chachua. He loves it. Big smile on his face. Oh, Gonzaga is sitting at number one, Baylor number two, Kansas number three from the Big 12, Texas from the Big 12 at number eight, West Virginia at number nine. So four Big 12 schools among the top nine in the nation. Next page would show you that Texas Tech is number 13. And so four, uh, five of the top 13 teams in the nation, King, are, uh, are from the Big 12. Yeah, I mean, the two things that stands out is the Big 12 and the Big 10, the two best conferences in college basketball this year. I want to get your thoughts on Gonzaga. They are obviously very, very good. Baylor and Gonzaga were scheduled to play December 5th in Indianapolis, and the game had to be postponed, and now looks like won't be rescheduled. Ooh, Mark Vidal went in and missed on that dunk on a nice feed. But uh, some folks uh, in some circles, uh, uh, well, I saw a story this week that said Gonzaga's head and shoulders above everyone in the nation. Uh, what do you think about that? I think that, um, as you see the layup from Macy Oteague, I think that those people need to pump their brakes. I mean, I think that Gonzaga is really, really good, but Gonzaga has had more opportunities to show on a national stage how good they are. I mean, every single national level, national stage game that Baylor was going to play, except Illinois, was canceled due to COVID. And I think Baylor showed when they played Illinois, who's a very good team that they are elite, they deserve to be up there. So I think that Gonzaga has had more chances to show it. But for those people who say that Gonzaga is head and shoulders and 
clearly the number one team. I mean, they just had more opportunities to show it. But when it comes down to it, I think that this Baylor team is just as good. Now, maybe after Baylor and Gonzaga, there might be a little drop off. But I do think this Baylor team is just as good, just as deep as that Gonzaga team. That's a really good point, and that's part of why people were so much looking forward to a Baylor-Gonzaga matchup. You yeah. can see them go head-to-head -head, uh, early in the season, really marquee game, number one versus number two. Uh, didn't happen, and they have to wait until March or maybe April for that to happen. Yeah, you don't think Baylor's legit. Just ask, this, ask that Illinois team what they did. If you didn't watch that film for 40 minutes, Baylor locked up, defended, scored, just, hey, when the March comes, we'll see who the better team is. Baylor's got to go through the gauntlet of the Big 12, so they will certainly be battle-tested. Gonzaga took apart uh, Virginia. Very good doing that, and they're about to head into conference play. So we are uh, almost six minutes into the second half here. Central Arkansas has not scored. Remember, it was 53-35 at halftime. It's now 64-35, Baylor on top. So Central Arkansas has uh, yet to uh, tally a point in the second half. And you know why that is, because Baylor got their <laughs> behinds chewed out in the locker room because of the defense and the lack of defense that was shown in the first half. Nice inbounds to Jonathan Chumwa Chachua who lays it in. Here's lead by 31 at the 14 minute mark. Still a long way to go in this game, but uh, Baylor is second in the nation in scoring margin. They've won five of their six games by 30 or more points. Their average margin of victory is 32.7 points per game. Hey, that's impressive. That is impressive for a big man to be able to guard on the perimeter and to take a charge on the ball. Not on the help side, but on the ball. You don't see bigs do this. And for Air John to be able to do this, or Everyday John, or whatever you want to call him to do this, that is very impressive. That, that's a skill that NBA teams look for. Here's and the alley-oop to Chachua. <laughs> How about both ends of the floor for Jonathan Chumwa Chachua? The energy is just contagious, and I think that is why. Because coming into the year, a lot of people would ask, who's going to replace Freddie Gillespie? Well, Air John is able to replace that man. And we show it, we see it time after time. All you have to do is lob it up, make Davion Mitchell's 10th assist easy. Grab how Parks give you deals. Back into Big 12 play for uh, everyone in the league this Saturday. And look at some of these matchups on uh, Saturday, January 2nd. Eighth-ranked Texas, third-ranked Kansas in Allen Fieldhouse. That's an 11 a.m. tip-off Central time. Second-ranked Baylor heads to Ames to play in Hilton Coliseum against Iowa State. TCU and K-State, 3 o'clock Central. That'll be on ESPNU. Ninth-ranked West Virginia in Norman to take on OU and Oklahoma State and 13th-ranked Texas Tech to wrap up the afternoon. Those are some dandy matchups on the uh, first Saturday of the new year, January 2nd, and plenty more where those came from. There's going to be big-time matchups every time out in the Big 12 this season. Looking forward to that, and the Bears will be, the Baylor Bears will be in uh, Ames, Iowa to take on Iowa State. Noon tip-off Central Time on Saturday. There is the first bucket of the second half for Central Arkansas. Points coming out of the timeout. Samson George with the bucket makes it 68-37 Baylor. And there's Macy Oteague breaking free for the layup again. He's had about three of those just in the second half. So Macy Oteague is finding his way to the bucket. There goes back up 70-37. Jonathan Chumwa Chachua playing defense. Davion Mitchell comes in to help, gets the steal ahead to Matt Meyer, who banks it in. On the feed from Davion Mitchell, who now has 12 assists on the afternoon. That triple double watch, six points, seven rebounds, and 12 assists for Davion Mitchell. DeAndre Jones for UCA. That was a pass, went off the rim, and Chachua takes it down. Oh, here come the Baylor Bears, Baylor coaches. 
socially distanced over there in the bench area, as you see uh, pretty much every arena around the nation. It's aimed for Central Arkansas, Coach Boone. Three ball, no good. Rebound, Matt Meyer on the backside. Meyer across midcourt. Jared Butler sitting on 17 points today. Five assists for him, three rebounds. Again, his season high is 20 points. Had that against Washington. That runner is no good. Central Arkansas takes it to their half of the floor. Here's steal by Baylor. Macy O.T. nearly had it. Out of bounds will stay with Central Arkansas when we come back. Air John is what you call him. Baylor fans are getting used to seeing this face because why? He does everything on the court. Plays defense, catches lobs game after game. Double-double machine. I'm sure that's not going to be his last one. This kid is very impressive. He can guard the perimeter. He plays hard, and playing hard is a skill nowadays, at least that's what they say. But he brings the same thing to the game, very consistent, energy after energy. Hey, high motor, high ceiling for this kid. May have a new nickname today. He may be Double Double John now. <laughs> <laughs> we keep adding to his list of nicknames. His first Double Double is a Baylor Bear, second of his career, 12 points, 10 rebounds for John. There's a three right side, no good by Flagler. Ball out of bounds and over to Central Arkansas. I think what's the most impressive thing is that he does it game in and game out and does not need to start in order to play his role. And he, he literally excels in his role. He likes coming off the bench because as soon as he comes off the bench, you know what, you know what you're going to get. And he's going to bring it every single game. Well, and doesn't Coach Drew and the other coaches, don't they love that? Somebody yes. that doesn't mind if he's not starting and it is really just instant uh, energy when he comes off the bench. I mean, it shows like two things. You're, you're, you're selfless. You care more about the team than you do your own uh, accolades. And secondly, if we see another three from DeAndre Jones, and secondly, coaches love consistency. If they can throw you on the floor and know that, hey, I'm going to get 10 rebounds at least, or I'm going to get at least 10 points from this kid, they love this. You see the backdoor cut from Maceo. Coaches love consistency. Co Coach Drew always talked to me about that. What am I going to bring, get from you every single game? What, what can I know that I'm going to get from you or expect from you? I don't know how he's doing it, but Maceo Teague is uh, getting open on those drives and the backdoor cuts. He's got another two there. Maceo Teague has 15 on the afternoon, 7 of 11 from the floor. That's going to be a, a, a jump ball on the alternate possession. It's going to be Baylor's ball. Good defense by the Bears. Mr. Teague started off kind of quiet tonight, but just somehow he finds his way to get, to get his points. There's that four players in double figures already with 9.45 to play. Teague That's is tough. one of those. Look That's at that tough. move. Wow. That's tough. The ability to pick up the ball before the defender can stick his hand in and finish with the left-hand floater. Maceo is so crafty. 17 on the day, makes it look easy. Maceo T puts the Bears up 76-40. Mm. I bet you won't duck it. Oh! oh, he did. <laughs> oh, Matt. Matt Meyer, the steal and the dunk for two for Baylor. But I don't think people really understand how good he is. Like I, I really don't think that Baylor fans know how good that this kid is. He's 6'9", and he's really a guard. He's super athletic, can shoot the ball, can handle it. He has probably some of the most pro potential, NBA potential that I've seen in a long time. Defense by Flagler. Here's Teague again, <laughs> firing a three, and he is hitting it. Maceo Teague on some uh, kind of roll for the Bears, giving 20 on the afternoon. Yeah, he didn't need to take that bounce, but <laughs> you do you, Maceo. 81 to 40 is the Baylor lead, biggest lead of the day for the Bears. Eight and a half minutes to play. Second half, a steal on the perimeter. This is going to lead to a dunk <laughs> by Adam Flagler and a technical for hanging on the rim. There's the steal and the dunk by Flagler. Teammates love it. Got a little too hype right there with the pull up. 
Matthew Meyer, the defense of Baylor, is turned up right now. See Flag with the steal and Matthew Meyer with the steal and the dunk. Everybody right now has stepped up their level of intensity on the defensive end. Central Arkansas, five turnovers the last 440 of this game. And Baylor's on an 11-0 run thanks to that, a 15-3 run overall. Zach Loveday is going to get some minutes. Zach Loveday, the seven-foot freshman. Off the bench for the Bears. Gallipolis, Ohio. Gallipagus. Where is that at? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm not sure I pronounced it right. I asked Zach, and now I can't remember exactly what he said. <laughs> I may have butchered that, so I need to ask him again. And a foul whistle, and a foul is going to be called on L.J. Cryer. 83-41 is the Baylor league lead. Teague is sitting at 20 points on the day. His season high is 23. Jared Butler went out with 17. His uh, season high is 20. Really spreading things around scoring-wise for the Bears. It's one thing about this team. You mentioned uh, who Chumwa was unselfish, but I, I think there's uh, unselfishness all over this Baylor team, and that's a big part of their success. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of guys who can make plays, and they love playing with each other. You can tell. And they know each other well, and you can also tell that. Um, th this team is impressive, and they're deep. They're about solid eight or nine deep right now, and that's what I'm saying. But, oh, as we see a three right there by, by Kyalu, who, who stepped up. But that's why I think for those people that think Gonzaga is so much better than this team, and they're, and they're so deep, I mean, don't forget, Baylor has nine players who can play with any one of those guys at Gonzaga. Yeah, no drop off at all. Really deep bench for uh, Coach Drew and the Bears. There's a three straight away, just short. Rebound Central Arkansas. Sai Oluwakiri brings it up. And a charge is called. A charge drawn by Flagler. Eddie Kayalu stepping up in the absence of Burgesson. They're going to need a lot of threes. The Central Arkansas Bears. Baylor are hitting on all cylinders this afternoon, playing very well. First game back after a seven-day break for Christmas. Talked about the turnovers early. Baylor had uh, eight at halftime, right? Eight at halftime. Yeah, yeah. They've got ten in the game now, so really taking care of that. And really uh, clamped down defensively better in the second half as well. Oh, nice floater right side of the paint for two by L.J. Cryer coming out of the timeout. The floater was tough, but the move to get to the floater was impressive. Three-pointer for Central Arkansas. Sai Oluwakiri with three. Makes it 85-47, Baylor on top. Jordan Turner's on the floor for the Bears. Zach Loveday remains out there. Mm. Elbow jumper, a little strong by Cryer. So Alcorn State tomorrow, then headed to Ames to play Iowa State on Saturday back in Big 12 play for the Bears. It's Big 12 the rest of the way, except for the Big 12 SEC Challenge game. The Auburn Tigers coming into the Farrell Center to play that game, and that is on January 30th. Three ball rims out. King, when you were playing, what do you think of those uh, challenge games, especially the SEC Challenge, which came in the middle of conference play? Yeah, a lot of teams just view that as a getaway from, from the conference. But Coach Drew made sure that we would always take that game 100% serious. You know, his, his big phrase on that is, we're going to be dependable. And when it comes to, you know, who plays who, they can always count on us to win those games. So we actually took that game just as serious as we took a conference game. And Coach Drew always made, want to make sure that the Baylor Bears, no matter what happens or who plays who, that we're always dependable. And they can count on a victory for us as we see the tough move by Adam Flagler. That was, I don't know how he got that ball out of his hands, much less through the rim. Great shot there by Flagler. 
Coach Drew uh, puts a lot of emphasis on those challenge series, those challenge games. Yeah, he always wants to win. I think that's the thing about Coach Drew that a lot of people don't realize is he's so competitive. Like, I, I, when you look at the word competitive, like, like Coach Drew sometimes does not sleep at nighttime after a loss. Like he's, he, he takes his job that seriously, and he's so competitive that if he no, thinks he, he can do something better, he literally will stay up all night because he wants to consistently improve. That man watches more film than almost anybody I know. I'm surprised his eyes don't hurt. <laughs> Bears leading here 87 to 49. Jonas Munson on the floor for Central Arkansas. Zach Loveday, nice turnaround jumper, left it just short. Jonathan Chamwa Chachua, I've talked about his double-double. He's sitting at 12 points on the day. His career high is 13. Jordan Turner with a rebound for the Bears. Going to bring it up himself. Good Stop, ball. pop, and no on the three-pointer. Jordan Turner was going to do that all himself. It's a three that's no good. Here's Turner again. Long range three straight away is no good. Flagler missed on that one, then knocked the ball out of bounds at the other end of the floor. Four minute mark, time out on the floor, 87-49. Baylor Bears are growling, number two team in the nation, up big on Central Arkansas and lead to COVID and other issues and passed away just last week. So Jeannie was always so proud of being from Vernon, Texas. Uh, King, she would always, you didn't have to talk to her long, and she'd mention Vernon, Texas. I'm from <laughs> Vernon, Texas, and she'd say it with a smile. And so we certainly uh, share in the loss of Jeannie Price Nallen. Back to play as we click under four minutes in this game. 23 turnovers now by Central Arkansas with that one. Only 10 by the Bears. Again, they had eight at halftime. So they've done a really good job taking care of the ball here in the second half. Jordan Turner, a three, and he knocks it home. And this is a lineup you could see potentially in the next three years be a potentially maybe a starting lineup or a huge, play a huge role in Baylor basketball. It's a really good point. Yeah, a lot of young guys out there now. And still playing really hard, both ends of the floor. Jonathan grabs another rebound. Jonathan Chumwa Chachua already a double-double for the Bears today, adding to those numbers. Zach Loveday missed on that turnaround jump hook. Jordan Turner got it. His fires on the three. Three minutes to play. Bears about to run their record to 7-0 and on the season. They will remain the only undefeated team in the Big 12. Near travel there, but the shot is good in the paint by Jared Chatham. Bears are also going to uh, continue an impressive non-conference uh, streak. Games in non-conference. It has an outstanding record. Games uh, like this in the month of December. 106 and 8 in non-conference home games since the 07-08 season. 67 and 4 in non-conference home games since December of 2012. Yeah, I can um, count for two of those losses. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I thought you were going the other way. I thought you were going to count your wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> Do not say that. <laughs> I really thought you were going the other way. You were counting your wins. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, because hey, the four, there's only four losses, so. Yep. Man, oh man. Oh, two of them stick stick with you on this court too. Yeah. yeah hey, man. but you know what? We actually turned out to be a good team that year, my senior year, because every Baylor fan in the history of Baylor who's ever watched Baylor probably thought we were the worst team to ever step on a court. But we end up being a good team, losing to Gonzaga in the second round. So shout out to everybody on that team. <laughs> Jackson Moffitt is on the floor. Mark Patterson is on the floor. Jackson Moffitt gets the uh, mullet cam uh, all to himself on the right side there. I visited with Jackson yesterday, and he said, I said, where'd that come from? Did you lose a bet or something? He said, no, no, I'm just kind of home and let it grow. He said, my mom likes it. My girlfriend likes it. So uh, I'm going to keep it. 
Hey, that's all that matters. It, well it, done, Jackson. If your mom and your girlfriend <laughs> like it, <laughs> then right. you, you got to keep it. <laughs> Get what everybody else says. <laughs> that's right. There's nothing wrong with that. Jackson Moffitt, uh, pride of Magnolia, Texas. As runner banker by LJ Cryer for two for the Bears. Hey, Jackson was a bucket in high school. I think he averaged like 25 to 30 his, his senior season. He was a bucket. Looking for points here for Jackson Moffitt. The oh, reverse that. layup, no good. Oh, I might have hyped him up too soon. No, man. <laughs> he is looking for his uh, first points this year. Today may be the day. I think it's the day. Central Arkansas still firing the threes. That's another one by DeAndre Jones. Oh, I'm sorry, that is not Jones. Brendan Simmons with the three for Central Arkansas. 25 made threes by the two teams combined today. Oh, trying to feed Jackson, trying to get him that bucket, lost the handle. Patterson is out there also. Mark had a uh, three-pointer that got the Bears to 99 their last game against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Back had a bucket against K-State to put Baylor over 100 or to 100. Ooh. Blocking foul. Mm, that could have gone the other way. Might have been charged. First foul on Jordan Turner. Central Arkansas not shooting. They will inbound with a minute four remaining on the clock. Central Arkansas will drop to one and seven on the year with the loss. Pick, pick seventh in the Southland Conference preseason poll. Here's Patterson. Runner, no. What an athletic play by Patterson right there, because that was a horrible pass from Zach Loveday. Oh, look at him make another one. Is he going to dunk it? Oh! Oh, no. <laughs> he went for the dunk and missed the basket. Oh! The Jackson Moffitt's there. Come on, oh, Jackson. Jack get it in. Oh, man. He's getting so many opportunities. <laughs> oh! Everybody's cheering for Moffitt and oh, Patterson man. to get it in. <laughs> he was right there. Come on, Jack. 38 seconds. Baseline jumper, no good. Look, it's the mullet. <laughs> it's the mullet. It's holding him back? Yeah, the mullet is holding him back from his powers. <laughs> well, you know about Samson. Yeah, you got to cut the hair off, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Teammates really pulling for him. Got to get a bucket right here. Here's Jackson Moffitt again. Aw, oh, don't. Gets the ball away to Loveday, a three-pointer, no good. Rebound Central Arkansas. Bears may not get it back. Shot clock is off. 24 seconds to go. Can't say that Jackson Moffitt didn't have his opportunities to score. <laughs> he had several of them there. Ah, oh, Jack. At the end of the day, Baylor's going to run their record to 7-0 and on the season. Final score, Baylor 93, Central Arkansas 56. The Bears in their first game back after Christmas with a big win over the Bears of Central Arkansas. Hey, they came out first half a little sloppy. Second half, they tightened up, especially on the defensive end and turnovers. The Bears took care of business. Baylor now 7-0 on the season. Central Arkansas drops to 1-7. And, and Baylor will be back in action tomorrow. Alcorn State, 2 p.m. Central Time here in the Farrell Center. We'll have the broadcast for you tomorrow beginning at 2 p.m. Central on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. They're showing all their weapons today. A deep bench, good defense, a lot of offense with 93 points on the board to run their record to 7-0 on the season. For King McClure and our entire crew, I'm John Morris. Thanks for being with us. Happy New Year. More Baylor basketball tomorrow. Thanks for watching Big 12 Now on ESPN+.